It's been a while since I looked at a bunch of free and open source tools and utilities that you can use on Linux. So here are a lot of those in no real particular order that either you recommended or that I found by just browsing idly on Flathub or looking at the GNOME and KDE apps weekly posts. Of course, if you have other cool Linux apps that you use daily, don't hesitate to share them in the comments. And in the meantime, here is this message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxkia. Basically, they are your open source Swiss army knife. They have solutions that will let you automate and simplify all the maintenance steps of your open source tech stack, thanks to various security and support offerings like their famous rebootless life patching that I've talked about a lot on this channel. But they also have endless lifecycle support for Linux distros that are end of life, for development languages and for software development frameworks like, for example, Spring. Specifically, with endless lifecycle support for Spring, they offer long-term security support for Spring Framework 5.3, 6.1 and 6.2, and for Spring Boot 2.7, 3.2 and 3.4, but also for other Spring projects, including Spring Data, Spring Security, Spring Batch, Spring Web Services, and Spring Integration. These versions will get security fixes for as long as you need them, so you can either keep using the software you currently use, or you can plan a transition without any stress or deadline. It also helps to ensure that you stick to your security obligations and your various compliance requirements. A lot of dependencies for Spring also receive patches alongside Spring itself, and setting up endless support is as easy as adjusting a config file to get the patched versions straight from Tuxcare. So click the link in the description to learn more about endless lifecycle support for Spring, but also for Linux distros and other frameworks that Tuxcare offers. Okay, let's start with the apps. And since we're doing this as a video, here is one app that feels quite impossible to ignore. It's called Pipeline. It's a desktop client to watch and download videos from YouTube and Peertube. It's obviously on Flathub. Most of these applications will be. I will mention if they're not. If you don't use Flatpaks or Flathub, then you'll have to look for the alternative installation options for your own distro. All the links in the description will be the Flathub link, so you can just find those apps easily. And it's just the only way you have to install applications reliably on any other distro. So Pipeline lets you subscribe to creators and channels and basically lets you build your own subscriptions page, but away from what YouTube creates for you, which, if you didn't know, doesn't always include every video from every channel you subscribe to, especially if you follow a lot of channels. You can filter out shorts, you can download videos to watch them offline, you can manage your watch later list, and you can even import subs from YouTube or New Pipe if you don't want to recreate that entire list. It also works with Peertube channels. It's just a great way to watch stuff from people you enjoy without using the website that they publish on if you don't like going there. Just remember that not watching the videos on YouTube doesn't generate any revenue for the creator, meaning that if everyone uses Pipeline, no YouTuber can ever make ends meet. But hey, you do what you want. And if you want to use Pipeline and you want to support the channel, there are links to my Patreon page in the description. You get a lot of benefits for not a lot of money. Now, if you have images that need a quick tweak, changing to another format, changing the quality, changing the background color, resizing images, or even applying these changes to multiple images, then you have Switcheroo. It's a really nice utility. Once you're done with all the tweaks you want to apply to your image, you can immediately open it to check what it looks like. And you also have an option to paste something from the clipboard to avoid having to save and load stuff all the time. It just lacks the option to flip the image or rotate it, and maybe an automatic background removal tool would be really cool as well, but it's still a tool I use very regularly in its current state. Now, if you want something a bit more advanced for batch processing of images, there's Converscene. This time, it's a KD application. It lets you grab a bunch of images and convert, resize, rotate, or flip them. It also has a lot of options for the output, the converted or modified image. It can also transform a PDF into individual images. It can compress images. It can extract images from Windows.ico files and more. So it's the usual theme for applications. You've got the simple GNOME version that has some features, but not all of them, and the way bigger, more complex KDE app for more advanced needs. 
Now let's move on to tools and applications you can use to manage some system related stuff. And if like me, you find GNOME system monitor a bit basic, but KDE system monitor a bit too complicated, resources might be the exact middle of the road option you've been looking for. It is designed for GNOME, but of course it runs on any desktop. It's on Flathub as well, and it looks really good. You have two main tabs, apps and processes to manage what is running, and also you have nice graphs that always tell you how much CPU, RAM, GPU, or disk activity, network activity your system currently uses or generates. Clicking a graph shows you more detail, like the CPU load per core, details about how much RAM and swap is being used, VRAM usage, and even battery usage or charging, which is really cool. There are tons of system monitors for Linux, and terminal users will likely favor HTOP, but if you want a graphical one, and if configuring the KDE system monitor to show exactly what you need feels like too much work, resources might be what you want. Although I do prefer the next app we're gonna talk about. It's called Mission Center. It has an adaptive interface to adapt to the window size and it shows very nice looking graphs with all the metrics that you'd want and the list of apps and all their processes, background processes or even system services. You can have more details like the logs of certain services and of course you can start and stop everything at will. It looks really good, it's quick and it's a fantastic system monitor for all desktops. That's the system monitor I started using on KD because it's like the exact middle of the road that I'm looking for between all the information, but not too much information. If you prefer small graphs lodged in a corner or floating over your desktop, but you don't want those graphs on your panel cluttering things up visually, you have monitorettes. It just gives you nice little graphs that you can display vertically, horizontally, or as a grid. You can resize the app at will, it just floats over your desktop like a widget. It looks good, it's simple, it's easy to access at all times without having all these numbers and graphs on your panel uh, just distracting you. It's nice. It really makes me long for the good old days of desktop widgets, super flashy with gradients and stuff like that, the Mac OS X Tiger inspired widgets like Caramba on KDE, I just love those. Now, if you like to fine tune your GPU, there's LACT, L-A-C-T. It lets you see info about your GPUs, or GPU if you only have one, but it can also let you overclock those GPUs, whether it's an AMD, Nvidia, or Intel. Of course, as with all overclocking, be careful, you never know what you could burn down inside your PC, but it does give you plenty of options to tweak the clock speeds for various power states, to control the fan curve, and also to view all the software-related stuff, like the Vulkan feature levels and extensions that your card supports. It's not something I want to mess with personally, I don't need it, my Nvidia GPU delivers the performance I need from it, I'm not going to tweak that at any point, but I've seen a lot of comments pointing out the lack of overclocking tools on Linux. This is one, so you can try it out. Now, in terms of application management, Flatpak might be the best packaging format we have currently, at least in my opinion, I know some of you disagree, but it does tend to sometimes leave things around on your system. And Warehouse, the next app we're looking at, lets you manage all of that. It shows all your installed Flatpaks, it lets you roll back unwanted updates for individual packages, or it lets you pin runtimes, you can mask specific Flatpaks, you can add remotes, you can manage them, you can remove unused user data, left behind after you uninstall stuff, it is a nice little toolbox to handle all these cool Flatpak packages that I've just told you about. You can try them out, and if you don't like them, you can use Warehouse to clean up after it, in case they don't clean up after themselves. Now, if you prefer app images for some reason, Gear Lever is a nice little helper to install app images in your menu and your system, but also to let you update them if you provide an update URL for them manually. It's still app images, so I'm not a fan, but if you use these and you want a little graphical utility to manage those applications, Gear Lever is pretty nice. It also lets you uninstall those app images without really leaving traces or menu entries that need to be deleted, so that's, that's kind of cleaner than just using app images on their own. Of course, you have background demons that you can use to do that as well if you don't want a graphical interface. Now, in terms of utilities, if you write code and develop anything, you likely often have to do some format conversion, some parsing, some formatting checks and more. And Dev Toolbox has all the tools that you'd want to make that much easier and graphical as well. 
It can convert timestamps, JSON and YAML. It can encode and decode a bunch of formats. It can check the formatting for JSON, SQL, XML, HTML, JS, CSS and more. It can minify JavaScript and CSS and it has a bunch of generators to create hashes, lorem ipsum text, QR codes. It can also test regular expressions. It can convert text and change the case. It can validate JSON. It can preview markdown. It can check for color contrasts and more. It's your all-in-one tool to make sure that all the tedious tasks that you regularly have to do to convert stuff and check that stuff is properly formatted are just way easier, graphical, visual. It's a nice tool that I think every developer will find a use for. Even if I don't write any code, I still find a use case for this thing at least once a month. Now, if you like using grep in the terminal, but sometimes you like a little graphical user interface, then clap grep is what you need. It lets you look for text inside of documents and even open the right document at the right page if you double click on the result. It supports a lot of options with search patterns, case sensitivity, specific search path as well. It works inside PDFs as well. And I must admit, since I've discovered this thing, I just don't use the terminal with grep. I just use clap grep. It just serves all the needs I have for this command line tool, but graphically and really, really quickly as well. Now, if you often take notes, but you'd rather dictate those notes rather than type them, or if you simply can't type them, then there's SpeechNote, another KDE application, not a GNOME one for a change. You can just record your voice, it will transcribe it into text, and then you can even translate that text. It's all done using large language models, but it's done locally, so it's not sending anything to anyone outside of your computer. It's a handy tool to have. The interface to add models is cumbersome, not necessarily the most legible if you don't know what models are or which model you should use, but it's fine once it's set up. I haven't found a use for it in my workflow just yet, but I'm keeping it around just in case. Now, in terms of productivity, there are tons of options on Linux, but there are a few that caught my eye specifically. The first one is Errands. It's a to-do list app that goes a bit further than most. It can sync with any CalDAV provider or with Nextcloud. It supports adding a start date and due date, notes and priority to each task. Plus, it supports tags, attachments, and even task callers. Each task can have subtasks, which have the exact same option as a regular, normal task, and everything can be grouped in lists. As with most CalDAV-based lists, though, it does lack support for recurring tasks, but if that's not a problem for you, it is a wonderful little app. Although I do prefer and use the next one that has a few more features. I already mentioned Planify a while back, but it's still an absolute beauty. Think OmniFocus on Mac, but a bit simpler, but still really, really good. It lets you create task lists locally called projects here, or you can sync those with Todoist or Nextcloud. Each task can be recurring, although that's going to be lost on Nextcloud because it doesn't support it last time I checked. It also lets you pin tasks and find those in a specific pin board and also at the top of each project. You can add attachments, notes and subtasks, tags and reminders to every single one of your tasks. And you can create sections inside of each project to sort things the way you like so you can collapse tasks or sections individually. It also has a lot of sorting options and it has nice categories at the top for inbox, as in the tasks that haven't been categorized yet for today, scheduled, completed, but also a pin board with everything you pinned, a view of your labels and all the tasks attached to them. You have a quick add window that you can summon at any time, even when the app is minimized, and you can just type a task and it will add it to your inbox. You don't need to open the app specifically, although you will have to create a shortcut for it manually until Planify starts supporting global keyboard shortcuts. It is the simple best to-do list slash task management uh, app that I found on Linux. I use it every single day to manage everything that I need to create. I don't use all of its features, but I just find it really nice, smooth, stable, reliable. It just works really well for me and I enjoy that app immensely. 
Now for note taking, I currently use QO Notes because I'm used to it and it has a bunch of plugins and stuff that I like to play around. But if you need something simpler, there's Clever Note with a K, of course, because it's a KDE app, and it lets you take down notes in Markdown with a previewer and an editor, an integrated cheat sheet, a few settings, and note management through a directory and list of files. It's all very basic text notes, so it's all nice and portable, each note is an individual file, the interface follows KDE's recent guidelines as well, which is really nice. It's a simple app, but definitely recommended, especially if you're on KDE, because generally note-taking apps there are either super old, with a very very old looking clunky interface, or they are super complicated, like QO notes, where you're gonna spend days to really customize that thing to your liking. Clever Notes is a nice, simple option. But if you're on GNOME, there's another one. It's called IOTAS. It's the GNOME equivalent to Clever Notes. It's an app I used extensively when I used GNOME as my main desktop. It's very simple. It has a notes list. It supports markdown syntax. You can favorite some notes. You can store them in categories. You can sync stuff with Nextcloud notes if you need that. You have spell checking. You can export notes in various formats. You can search your notes straight from the GNOME shell if you use GNOME. And you have a focus mode to really concentrate on the line you're currently writing. It's simple, it's efficient, it looks nice, it's the quintessential GNOME app, basically. And that's it! This should make 14, I think, 14 applications uh, that I just found either by your recommendations uh, or by just looking at Flathub, uh, KDE, and GNOME weekly post. Those are all super cool, they're all open source, as far as I can tell, they're all validated by their original developer on Flathub, so if you trust the developer, you can download the app properly, they are not third-party repackages of something else. They all look really cool. Of course, there are tons of other applications for Linux, so let me know in the comments if you have other cool things that either you're working on, or that you're following up, or that you're using daily so everyone can benefit. The comment section is here for that, and I'll grab a few pics here and there and make more regular videos about this. I think it's nice to showcase projects uh, and smaller apps and utilities from time to time, because we all use them, but we don't really talk about them that much, and the developers who invest their time and effort in them definitely deserve the recognition. Anyway, this will conclude this video, but also we have this message from our sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. You know about them by now, they make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux pre-installed. I only use their devices and I've done so for I think the past three years now. Uh, everything that you see from me or hear from me, podcasts, videos, anything, is done on one of their laptops. It's the Infinity Book Pro 16 with an NVIDIA GPU. I built everything on Linux using their computer. And I also game on Linux with one of their desktop PCs. They're really good, they have plenty of options, plenty of form factors, plenty of devices. You can customize a lot of things about them, and they ship to most countries in the world. So do check them out, uh, the link is in the description. They're really, really solid. Anyway, this will conclude today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. You know where all the YouTube buttons are and why you should click them. You know where the comment section is and why you should leave a comment. And also there are links in the description if you want to support this channel. Thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!